One of the things that we saw in some of the nutcase reaction, both in the United States and Canada, was a couple of people being like, the beheaded babies, it's a lie. We've seen even Americans online, even right-wingers. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. It's AI, it's, it's nuts. I mean, what they're saying. So we actually went back and just pulled some of the firsthand reporting from CBS News, from ABC News, from I-24 News, from Jer the Jerusalem Post, all either saying themselves, the actual reporters had witnessed it, or interviewing senior IDF um, members who had witnessed it themselves. And we put it together just to set the record straight once and for all. Here's just a, a, a sampling of what we found. Israelis tell us that in one attack on a kibbutz, Hamas terrorist took brutality to a new level, even decapitating children and babies. Now that is coming to us not only from the Israeli Defense Forces, but also the organization that has the grim task of retrieving bodies. In every apartment, you can feel They're literally right around us in the room's dead bodies, their bodies. Body and you know, see, if they lock themselves, they burn the apartment. They burn the apartments. They shoot them, they shoot the baby, they cut the head. He saw 19 bodies at this house, including eight babies. I saw that baby. Beheaded. Beheaded. This is something that monsters do, not humans. Babies. Their heads cut off. That's what they said. Gunned down. Families completely gunned down in their beds. You can see some of these soldiers right now comforting each other. I'm sorry to begin it on such a dark note, but I'm just sick and tired of people pretending like, A, that's a lie, and B, like it matters how they killed the babies, like trying to find this distinction without a difference. Uh, Megan, first of all, I'm a longtime fan of yours, and thank you so much for your genuinely very strong stand over this very difficult week and a half. It has been seen by everyone, and it is remarkably appreciated. So really sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. When, when it gets to this question here, I mean, your your reaction is totally correct, which is ultimately, who cares? I mean, would these people who are making this up, and obviously they are transparently making up, would these people be satisfied if these Hamas savages, these barbaric medieval death cult butcherers, if they had not decapitated the babies, but had merely shot them execution style in their cribs while their crib was rocking back and forth at point blank range? At what point do they purport or, or do they claim that they would be satisfied? It's obviously an inherently illogical point. It is a total red herring. Ultimately, what is going on here, the people that that are spouting off this complete and utter nonsense. They are just getting off to dead Jew porn. And they frankly would prefer it to be a slightly different way, maybe. Maybe they would prefer it to be via bullet and not via jihadist machete. But all of this is coming from a deeply, deeply dark place. I, I mean, we are now 78 years after the surrender of Nazi Germany in 1945. And yet again, we see people not merely looking the other way, to a, a, a disgusting, a disgusting pogrom, obviously the, the most dead Jews in one day since the defeat of Hitler and the Nazis. They are not merely looking the other way. They are looking for any excuse whatsoever not to take the obviously correct, the obviously moral and righteous stand here, which is to stand with Israel and condemn these barbaric atrocities. And again, I just fear that it is coming from a very, very dark place a place, frankly, that is just ultimately rooted in unambiguous Jew hatred. Yes, I completely agree with every word you just said. It's just so obvious. This is not like, well, it's nuanced. Well, you know, you really have to. No, it's very clear. A massive act of terrorism took place against the Israelis two Saturdays ago, and there's only one place to land on it. There's only one place to land on it, especially if you're an American. I mean, I, it's like to see these college students is just, all right, we'll get to them in one second. I just want to add one more soundbite to it because in addition to the awfulness that I just played you, there has been, I mean, we could be here all day playing the sound bites from the reporters and the IDF, poor, those poor guys who had to go in there and actually find the bodies. But just for the record, because not everybody is updating the audience on this, here's another soundbite talking about the atrocities that were witnessed 10 days ago. Her baby's dead. I said, how do you know she's dead? Are you sure? She said, they shot her on, on the head. She was shot. And I didn't know how to comfort her. I couldn't even put my arms around her. They shot a baby, 
three months old, I think, in front of their mother. In the living room, to see two uh, parents, father and mother, t uh, hand tied in the back, and in the other side against them, uh, uh, the children, two small children, hand tied in the back, and in each of them were torched to see, and the middle is a table with this terrorist were sitting and eating while they were torching the kids. And you use the imagination, who saw what? And you see missing parts on dead bodies. That's only for torch and by the end, a, a, a gunshot wound. Yes, I saw babies, I saw children. I saw a mother um, holding her baby, holding her baby. And only one, get one, 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 one bullet went through both of them together. I saw 20 children together with the hand tied in the back, and they were burned. They shot and burned in piles. 20 children shot and burned in a pile, Yossi? And, and two piles. I would say about 280 bodies, 280 casualties. I would say 80% was torture. I saw a stroller with, that was stained with blood, a crib overturned on its side, taken outside of the door. This was in front of the house now. The crib overturned, splattered with blood, a child's toy still inside. I heard one story yesterday from, from one of the, the people who goes in and clears the bodies. And he said he found a, a pregnant woman who was shot in the head her stomach sliced open the baby still attached the umbilical cord and the the baby was stabbed i'm sorry i'm sorry to have to play that but this is the situation we're in because you've got people like the squad calling for an immediate ceasefire saying enough revenge has been exacted on gaza on hamas and it needs to end now as though those animals aren't going to want more blood just as soon as a ceasefire could be declared. Megan, we should be very clear what calls for a premature ceasefire, calls for a premature winding down or end of hostilities. We should be very clear about what those calling for that actually desire, what, what they are really trying to say without having the courage ultimately to say it. They want Hamas to be emboldened. They want Hezbollah to be emboldened. They want the Iranian regime to be emboldened. They want all of the radical Islamic enemies of Israel, of the United States, and of good, righteous, sane people the world over. They want those people ultimately to bend the knee before the forces of global jihadism, because that is literally what is happening right now. I mean, Israel versus Hamas is just a proxy for a much broader and longer conflict. And no, I'm not talking about kind of a return to a Bush era kind of neoconservative gun-toting war on terrorism. But the reality is, the reality is that jihadists all across the world, we saw what happened in Brussels recently, we saw what happened in Paris recently, we saw what happened on the streets of America when Hamas called for a global day of jihad rage or whatever was the exact description they called it last Friday here. The forces of evil and jihadism the world all over are emboldened right now. So it is not merely Israelis who happen to live near Gaza, such as my brother-in-law, by the way. He lives in a town called Netivo, it's about five, six miles from the Gaza border. We were all obviously terrified when this attack went down. Thank God he is safe. It is not merely folks like that who will be directly endangered by calls for a premature ceasefire. It is all of us, because these people who are out there, who are marching the Palestinian flag, which has supplanted the swastika as the symbol of Jewish annihilationism, of seeking ultimately to root out and extirpate, frankly, all what radical Islamic jihadists refer to as, quote unquote, infidels, Jews and Christian alike. All of those forces on the American University campus in the media, in the Fortune 500, in our schools, in our homes, in our communities, they will all be emboldened by a premature ceasefire and, frankly, anything less than the complete and utter eradication and extirpation of the Hamas regime. Now, obviously, it's going to get ugly. I mean, if Israel does finally launch this ground invasion, we, we think that Hezbollah is probably going to get in from Lebanon there. There's, a, there's the realistic possibility of a two-front war, God forbid, a three-front war potentially from Syria if Bashar al-Assad gets involved. 
And then obviously the massive elephant in the room is about the domestic Israeli Arab community. Uh, you know, about 20 percent of actual uh, of the Israeli population is Arab. So it, it, it's going to get ugly. But the point making is that this has to get done. This has to get done because anything less than that is not merely going to endanger Israelis. All of us, all of us will suffer the mid to long term consequences of a failure to do the job and get it done here. And yet in the eyes of, as I point out, the squad, Ilan Omar, Corey Bush, now Ayanna Presley, AOC, it needs to end right now. It needs to end immediately because the number of Palestinians who have been killed exceeds the number of Israelis who were killed because Palestinian children have been killed in Israel's response, even though Israel does its level best to avoid any civilian casualties, but Hamas uses them as human shields. Um, and so I'll just give you a flavor. I mean, there's a reason I played those sound bites, just so people understand what was done to Israel. That's just a fraction, a tiny fraction of what was done to Israel. Um, now you've got AOC out there. She wants an immediate ceasefire. I think we've got it uh, Monday night on CNN, SOT 2. What is Israel supposed to do about Hamas after they murdered, brutalized, mm -hmm. abducted over mm -hmm. a thousand of their citizens? Well, you know, I think what's important to note about a ceasefire is that it's not one-sided. I and mean, I think the position from Israel's perspective is that there was already an attack. Mm -hmm. I think what is important in terms of response is Israel does have a right to, to self-defense. I think what we need to take a look at in this situation is if collective punishment qualifies as defense. How else are they supposed to address a violent militant, mm -hmm. some say terrorist group, mm -hmm. other than to go in there right. and, and take them on directly? This is an inherently complex situation. It's complex, Josh. It's tough. You gotta really, you gotta really think about it to understand, you know, dead babies better. Yeah, only a radical leftist like AOC could possibly try to make this out to be more complex than it needs to be. The shredded lettuce on your favorite burger, the fruit filling in a donut, you may be surprised to learn they don't actually count on those five servings of fruits and vegetables you're supposed to be having each day. Oh, no. Or like my eldest thought ketchup, ketchup would count. No, it's a no. Now, I'm not going to nag you about your diet. But I am gonna share with you that the Mayo Clinic says, if you wanna help prevent heart disease, lower blood, your blood pressure, and lower your cholesterol or improve your cholesterol, eat five servings of fruits and veggies every day. This is why I wanna introduce you to Field of Greens. Unlike these other substitutes, each fruit and each vegetable in Field of Greens was medically selected by doctors to support your vital organs like heart, lungs, kidneys, and immune system. Field of Greens says, you will feel better with more energy and you will notice your skin, hair, and nails will look healthier too. If you don't always eat right and exercise, check out Field of Greens. I'm gonna get you started with 15% off your first order. Visit fieldofgreens.com, use the promo code MK, promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com, fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.